Well, hey, it's nearly Christmas, and you're live with Wow Ergonomics, Graham Cove here, and Paul Worsley. Hi, Paul. Nice Hi, top Paul. that you have. For those that Thank are listening, you very much. just describe your, the top that you've got on there, sir. Well, they're my initials on that side. Sorry, that Lovely. side. Uh, on that and side. then there's a little fox. A little fox, if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's nice. On that one there, yeah. And then, obviously, mouse trapper. Because we're the sponsors, sponsors of a team, but we can't have a bit about that after. Yeah, we have a, a, a little bit of a chat. We managed to get through the year. That's quite amazing, really. And what well, a year it has been. So hopefully yes. we'll bring a little bit of joy to people in the next hour. Um, if you're winding yes. down from from work, you're just thinking about just getting home, starting on the the you know Christmas mince pies and the and the booze. This is this is your ideal wind down time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to listen to want to listen to two guys talking about ergonomics for an hour just before that. If you're listening back on the podcast, you're probably well into all of that already. So uh, that's that's good. I hope, I hope you're having a great <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> so, there we go. Uh, the format of the show, if you haven't listened to it before, is that uh, I picked four subjects which we're going to talk about. We have actually got a special guest coming to join us as well today. So leave that as a little bit of a surprise. Or maybe two. Uh, maybe two, even. Uh, guests so we'll, we'll bring that person in so we've got four subjects we'll talk through that um we sort of interview each other really and uh you might learn something about ergonomics along the way so let's bring the the, uh, the topics up the first one today is how important is it for us to encourage health and well-being outside the office as practitioners working in the field of ergonomics i just want to preface this by saying uh, you know, I've I've seen quite a lot of very unfit ergonomic assessors over the years, <laughs> giving people advice about moving more uh, and and you know making sure that you're you're staying fit and healthy. Um, but actually, you know, it's one thing saying just move more at your desk, but actually, you know, when you're giving people advice about health and well-being, you you kind of need to be talking holistically about making sure that you're you're actually taking some time to be physical and, and, and move as well absolutely what, what what what's your your view on this paul well, yeah it was march this year wasn't it down um i've seen so many well i mean you just have to look on social media with with, with people um fitness level um weight levels um and i think i think for a lot of people weight, weight is a big issue um not not only for the physical side but for the vanity side as well um so that that's pretty much the, i mean i i was i mean i'm i'm in a fortunate position i'm naturally thin i just i don't put weight on but that doesn't affect you know i, I need to think about my, my fitness with my heart you know, all those things that you can't see that can still be affected by it, um, which is the reason why I took um, took the under sevens Foxhall team on, which were a local team in Blackpool. I was approached because a lot of parents were, were worried about their, their kids' health, um, but there was nowhere for them to go. Um, up until, I think, three weeks ago, um, they couldn't even train in a sports hall. They could do the, the activity at school, but once they got home from school, that was pretty much it. There wasn't anywhere to go and to let sort of six and seven year olds out at night when it's dark. Um, you know, it, it's not it's not safe, and, and you can't expect some some parents to actually you know supervise kids on the park and, and things like that. So what we did um, over a four week period was try and book some sports halls, um, try and arrange the finances, get the DBS clearances. Um, because obviously, you know, in football now, you have to have an enhanced DBS. Well, that would cause its own problems because there were delays at the DBS office. So there's all these things that have got to come in together just to allow nine, seven-year-olds to have a game of football. I mean, it's 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 hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. But the smile on the faces on that first night of training was amazing. It was literally, we opened the doors and literally off 
give them a ball each and they just ran around and smiled for, for an hour um we had our first game last saturday and i even had a a whatsapp message from a parent at half past five in the morning with a picture with a kid that was already dressed up for a game that was happening seven hours later at midday oh wow they were that excited to, to be part of it but you know, it, it's it's the difference in the parents as well because the parents can get out. They can get on a football pitch, even though they've got to have the social distancing and be two metres away and and all this. Yeah. It, it, it Brilliant. And they get to see nine sets of or eight sets of other parents as well. So rather than like sort of me and you doing this now, which is, which is still great, there's nothing yeah. better than actually being on a football pitch and, and having a laugh. So... There's so many things come, um, additional benefits that just come from that one group of seven-year-old kids playing football. It's a knock-on effect that that, that has. Um, after the first game, I had bags of ice on various different parts of my body, trust me. <laughs> I, cause I've, 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 I've not played prop, well properly in a team for, God, it's got to be... 15, 15, 16 years. Because obviously when I was 17 and 18, I was playing for Preston, Preston North End. Um, right. as an old YTS, if you remember the YTS schemes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was on a, a YTS down there and then then sort of had a bit of a bad, bad knee injury and then sort of dropped down the levels, but still played semi-pro until I was about 20, 25, 26, and then just played with my mates then. And that's what it was about for me. It was about the camaraderie. It was about meeting up with your mates, whether we got beaten, whether we whether we won. It, it was immature. It, it, it's brilliant for your, for your mental health well-being and also physical. And you can see that in the kids. I mean... I think one thing that, that we're missing out at the moment is it's, it's how it's affecting children. You know, yeah. we, we've had, you know, back back in our day, we, we could run to the park and we could, you know, I'd probably have to walk a mile and knock on someone's door because we didn't have a mobile. And it, it's almost like we're trying to get kids off social media and off the platforms, but it's almost like lockdown has forced them back into this. And now they've got a ready-made excuse. Well, I can't go out. I need to go on social media. So it's almost the, the battle that the parents are getting. We're getting no support with actually, with actually getting them out. But all I can say is that, you know, the kids aren't used to going to playing football at the moment. They're, they're actually really, really looking forward to it. They're asking me every time, when's our next game? When's our next game? When's our... So I've actually booked in three uh, friendly matches over the Christmas period. One on the 27th. Um, I'm trying to get one for the 20th. Ninth, and we've got one on the second of January. Um, and when I first booked it, I actually thought about the parents, thinking, "Oh, I bet they'll say no," you know, because it's Christmas time with the families coming together. But they've absolutely one hundred percent take our kids and get the park. So it's from an ergonomics point of view, I think it, it all it all coin it all coincides. It's all about health. It's all about movement. It's all about getting those endorphins flowing and, and making yourself feel good, you know, rather than just sitting on and clicking Netflix, you know, it, it, it's difficult sometimes that mental transition from one thing to the next, but um, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've found it so encouraging. I think that's what, so what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on it, Graham? Well, my thoughts on it are that, I think that uh, too many people have just been sat indoors. Um, and, you know, I mean, we're lucky here because we're in the countryside that, you know, especially when lockdown happens, we can go out, out the door yeah. two minutes away and, and we're into, you know, walking territory with lots of space. Um, but, I, yeah, I think that, you know, we really do need to remind people that, you know, that if if they can find space and activity outside of absolutely yeah. s sitting down and work it's it's got so many more benefits to them in terms of not just their physical health but also their mental health as well um yeah, the, the, thing, the thing that you say about the children is so important as well because yeah i think children do naturally gravitate towards devices these days and it's a, you know especially as parents are really really busy um, especially as they've been busy working from home, it's easy to sit mm. a child in front of a device, etc. But actually, if you think back, children are, 
you know, they do love getting outside and running around. They do love having yeah. having activity. Um, you know, and well, I think it's, it's like it's like that McDonald's advert, isn't it? It's that McDonald's advert where she throws a snowball, and then it's got the picture of the kid like jumping for joy, and then sort of going back to the normal teenagers. But honestly, get them outside, and they will just almost explode with with happiness and just getting rid of some energy you know and it's for, from a parent there's, there's honestly there is nothing better than seeing that smile on someone kid's face it's i mean they're not even my kids and even i was like this is amazing i mean we got battered in our first game i mean we got thoroughly trounced but it, 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 they didn't care one bit. It was just a matter of actually moving around. And, and the parents, some of the messages I've had, mate, have been, you know, that they've been so thankful and grateful just because yeah. they've been able to get the kids out. Because otherwise, I mean, you go to a lot of parks now, there's chains on them, they're all chained up, you can't get on, you need special permission. You know, it's, it's fantastic. You live in an area like you do, and, and my, me and my daughter go to the Lake District um, quite often, obviously not at the moment, but when we get when we get tanks, it's just three quarters of an hour up the road. But in Blackpool itself, there's so many um, sort of tower blocks and residential areas and and all the parks are either full of dog dirt and just not nice places to be the only places that you can go tend to be locked which to me it, it's just yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it, it's sad it, it's sad when i think back to my age where we'd all be on the park from literally now to when it goes dark and have to be dragged home so yeah we used to call it the wreck i don't know whether you yeah, used to call exactly, it yeah. Like yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the wreck, wreck. The recreational of ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, someone else that knows a little bit about this, and our special guest today uh, is Rebecca Pay, who's coming on to join us now. So, hi, Rebecca. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Now, yeah, it's, it's a lovely, lovely head array that you have there. What was that for? Christmas trees on your head there? Yeah, it was, and tinsel. Yeah, staying on brand as ever. Um, so Rebecca, I, I've, just following on from what Paul said, I mean, you you've got children. How how bad has it been during this whole period in terms of them getting out and letting off energy? Yeah, it certainly made a big difference. Um, when in the summer, obviously, we went out for walks every day. Like when you know the first lockdown, where you you were literally allowed to go out once a day or whatever it was, um, we actually stuck to that and we did actually go every single day for a walk. Um, and it was brilliant. Like we we got really into it. Like it, they we did what we um called an alphabet walk. So we had to look for something of a different letter every day. So we started with A, then we did B, whatever, and went through the whole alphabet. Um, so we were looking for things, you know, beginning with that letter to make it more interesting for them because they're well, they were three and six in the first lockdown. They're now four and seven. So obviously that's quite high maintenance ages <laughs> in that they you know they need quite a lot of input from adults still um my daughter's not so bad the older one she'll happily potter about and do things by herself but obviously my son three-year-olds and four-year-olds they're quite intense aren't they shall we say um yeah. and they don't want to just do stuff by themselves they want other people to get involved and can we do this can we do that so getting out for a walk or run around every day or on the bike sometimes made a big difference um and then i think it's been this time because it's colder and stuff we've been less inclined to want to go out for walks and that's been bad. That has, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not very good in the cold. <laughs> I'm a bit crap. Um, so I have. Oh, bitch. Yeah, yeah. So the thought of it is like, oh no. Yeah. yeah, it really puts me off. But actually, the last few weekends, we've made an effort to go to a park or something on a Saturday, or you know, a big country park or whatever, and go for a really big walk with them um, and play around. And it's made such a difference to them and their behaviour and everything because they've had a chance to run around and get fresh air and had little adventures looking for things and stuff. And I think, you know, I, I was fine. I wrapped up warm. I was just being pathetic before about it. But I think cause sometimes you look out and it's cold and it's grey or whatever you think, oh, no, I can't be bothered. But I think it makes a big difference if you can be bothered. <laughs> I, absolutely. And I, even with adults working, you know, you just got to put that effort in to getting out. You know, you can't. Just keep putting it off and thinking, well, yeah, but I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of work to do. Now, you've got a really 
interesting ergonomic story <laughs> because that's <laughs> pretty much how uh, we, we came to know each other in the first place. Yeah, um, kind of is. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, take us back to the start of all this. I mean, we normally have experts on here who in the field of ergonomics, but I wanted to get someone on that sort of had experienced it See, from I'm the not other an expert. end. Unbelievable. Uh, well, you, you I'm might not be. an expert in ergonomics, that's for no, sure. So. No, but but you're an expert in terms of having gone through the process to some degree now and you know take it take us back to what it was like you know when lockdown first happened when we first spoke etc i mean and, and what you've learned through this period in terms of why all of this stuff that we spout on about is important yeah well i mean for anyone who doesn't know when we first started the lockdown because obviously i had the kids at home and stuff my husband was also working at the beginning but then he was put on furlough so I was like well how am I going to work like because I just can't work with them around in the house it's really difficult because they just don't get it they interrupt all the time and so we've got a camper van and we came up with this idea to park the camper van around the corner literally around the corner from our house um, and then wire it up for internet um, and electricity and stuff because there's a like a back alley kind of thing that you, we could put the wires down no one uses that bit it's kind of like only an entrance to our house really at the back and we had all the wires going down there <laughs> connected up to the camper van because it was literally it just all worked I don't know the setup was quite lucky um and so there yeah I was sat in my camper van working every day and had it as like an office so it was quite unusual because <laughs> at first I went and sat in laybys and tried to work in my car which was a nightmare um because I had an older laptop then and it kept running out of battery as so I was looking into like charges you could get for the car and all this kind of stuff and it was like this is a nightmare and well, it's only it, thought, so long you can do that for before yeah, people exactly. start looking funnily at you as exactly. well exactly yeah. also people I put a post on I think LinkedIn about it and someone was like you're breaking the rules going to a lay-by what do you think you're doing driving you shouldn't be out Whereas it, you know, it wasn't really that bad, was it? Driving to a lay by and sitting quietly working, I don't think I was really doing that much harm. But you know, technically, maybe I shouldn't have been out driving or something. Um, so it was perfect with the camper van because I literally walked around the corner and got into it. So it wasn't breaking any rules. It gave me a break from the kids. I just told them every day, "Mummy's off to work." They had no idea where I was going. They just didn't know I was right around the corner <laughs> from the house. <laughs> So I could hear them playing in the garden sometimes and I was there in the camper van. But it was brilliant for me because it meant I had peace and quiet to just get on and work. And obviously I was quite busy because CVs got quite busy <laughs> during the lockdown um, and everything else. But obviously, yeah, set up ergonomically in a camper van, not ideal because my camper van isn't converted. There's no proper table and chairs and stuff like that. Um, it's literally sitting on like a normal car seat type thing. Um you know, with your laptop on your lap or whatever, and it's yeah, it wasn't great. I started to get pains here, there, and everywhere. Um, I met you in our kind of coffee group that I set up on a Thursday morning for parents struggling in the lockdown. Um, and you were like, Well, let's do an assessment and sort it out. And I was thinking, Well, what can you do in a camper van? How can you make this any better? I can't change anything. Um, but you actually came up with a few ideas that did actually make big, a big difference. Like one of the things that's such a basic thing was because obviously like a car seat is like a bucket sort of seat um was just to put a cushion in there to flatten it out so you're sat on a proper surface rather than sat in this like weird car bucket seat because that's that you know that wasn't good um, yeah my back and stuff and that, that little things like that made a big difference and also you said about moving it around and not always having the laptop in the exact same position and not always sitting like doing it exactly the same way and like just me remembering that I had a Bluetooth keyboard that I could use and then not always have to have the laptop right there. And it really yeah. helped, like talking to someone else came up with a few ideas. So I thought, oh, you, what, you know, I couldn't understand that you'd be able to come up with any ideas at all, really. But but you did. And, <laughs> and even, I mean, Paul obviously works for a manufacturer and, and, and they supply a specific kit. But even Paul will probably tell you that the importance of the education bit in that chain because it, it doesn't matter even if you have the right kit or you have mm. good kit you know unless you actually know how those things work together in the way that you work then <clears throat> it actually is fairly pointless yeah and it's it, it's understanding that you need to move your body around and not just sit in the same position all the time constantly as well which is obviously relevant wherever you are 
Um, whereas I'm terrible for that. I'll get very kind of hyper focused on something. Um, and then two hours or three hours has gone by and I haven't really moved because yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll get lunch in a minute. I'll get a cup of tea in a minute. I'll just crack on with this. And then, oh, and then now this is coming, so I better do this. And then, oh, I better just finish this off. And then before you know, hours and hours have gone by and I haven't moved position at all. Exactly. And, and, really and I, think it's the, the, I think it's the one thing that's the most difficult thing to get into people's heads is that it's not just, a, it isn't just about product or it isn't just about creating even the perfect space because you can, you can create a perfect space in your head office with the perfect chair and the perfect sit stand desk and the perfect piece of equipment here, there and the other. But unless you actually start to look at your workflow and your, the way that you work and the way that you break up your day and the way that you're, uh, you, the way that you're doing everything and to see whether you're doing everything as smartly as possible and uh, doing everything, um, throughout the day with some variance in it you know then it's not going to make the difference <laughs> so. yeah and i think that's the thing isn't it it's varying your tasks as well sometimes not just having the same type of tasks all in a yeah. row but thinking oh okay i'll put in a call there or this that the other there. so it's different types of things you're not sat in the exact same position yeah yeah i mean obviously certain certain bits of kit are very helpful in terms of making the body perhaps uh, sit in a, a better position in, to, uh, in terms of there are things that we call more, more neutral postures where the weight loading of a, of a limb or the, the head or the neck or the shoulders isn't uh, so acute and therefore it's not it's not you know pulling on bits of the body that it shouldn't be pulling for, for lengths of time but at any posture any posture if it's held for too long is not a great posture so yeah well I've had to have um load of physio and stuff on my knee um since because of the lockdown basically um and it's purely she said basically it's because i stopped doing exercise um because i used to go to pole fitness classes and then they obviously had to stop because i stopped doing it really lots of regular exercise and i just started sitting still a lot they said that's literally what's happened um and that you know there was no it's not like bad damage but it's like it's literally from just sitting in bad positions and too much sitting <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, from going from quite active to sitting still and working too much. Basically Pe people just don't understand that. You know, I, I actually um, wrote a, an article once where I found two people, one had uh, had a, a, a bad motor accident or bad accident in a, in a motor car. Um, and they were left with a, a list of injuries. And then another person had been working in an office for 30 years and they ended up with exactly the same issues. <laughs> so exactly Crazy. the same conditions. Yeah. And I called it from, I called it 30 seconds or 30 years. But, you know, it, when you looked at the, the, the back issues they had, the spinal injuries they had, the, the hip injuries they had, the leg injuries they had, they were the same. Um, it's just that one gradually happened over a period of time um, caused by, you know, sitting for too long, sitting with, you know, sitting with bad postures, you know, not not moving enough. And the other happened, you know, in 30 seconds in a car because someone bashed into them. So yeah, you crazy. Know, people don't think that this could really cause long term injury which is significant but it could yeah be. that's why i wanted to get the physio on my knee and get it sorted sooner rather than later rather than let it grow into a bigger problem because i was like i don't understand why i'm getting knee pain i'm not that old <laughs> what's going yeah. on yeah no absolutely well thank you very much for joining us today you're welcome and, and you're, you you're winding down for christmas now yeah i've got one cv to finish for someone <laughs> and then that's it <laughs> There you go. Excellent. Hopefully, be... hopefully it'll be my fiftieth recommendation because I've got forty-nine <coughs> now. So. Oh, that'd be Excellent. fantastic. Be good to get number fifty, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. End the year on a maybe high. Boris Johnson, but Boris Johnson, <laughs> he might need a new TV. Do you, do you think? Yeah, I should I should mock one up for him? That'd be quite a good post, wouldn't it? I would. Wait yes, for I'd, it. I'd, oh, I'd really, oh, I'd really oh, love a, a, a new CV. I, I think a, a new CV may maybe of. 
significant help uh, to me in particular at this time of year, uh, especially as I may be looking for a new job. I don't know. I mean, it could be ha- happening. Sorry, Boris, you're screwed. I'm not helping you. Wouldn't touch me with a barge pole, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, I, I no doubt will speak to you later anyway. Yes, probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Rebecca. See you later, Rebecca. See you later. Happy Christmas. Bye. Yeah, same to you. There you go. Special guest on this episode of uh, Wow Ergonomics. <laughs> interesting <laughs> interesting to hear. And I'm not talking about the, the bad Boris impersonation either. But interesting to hear it from uh, a user's yeah. perspective. Um, I have you talked to many other sort of users in this this period as well? I think that they're all pretty much the same, to be honest, Graham. I mean, each household um, is set up differently. Each person tends to be suffering from the same the same thing. It's either chairs or um, laptops, using laptops, and you know having pain in the neck. So I think that they're all they're all common common issues um that i think we, we, we're both finding at the moment um but you can only give the advice to that person to make that that decision to change the, the way they're doing something um i mean how how do you find do you find most people do take your advice or do some people say well i'll carry on as i'm doing at the moment what, what what's your what's your thoughts Oh, I'd like to think that most people do take my advice. I think because I, I think I think because generally I'm I'm pretty sort of hard hitting with it. At, at the end of the yeah. day, I, I, I think I think and you, I think you I think you've got to be to to a certain extent. I don't think there's any yeah, there's, there's any point in actually saying um, when you Sugar speak to someone, yeah. you know, I'm I I would recommend this. You know, if I if I think yeah. that somebody genuinely needs to actually do something mm. or it's going or it's going to have massive long-term impact on them then i will yeah. tell them that because you know yeah. uh and I, I think sometimes that's that's an issue within yeah, uh, the ergonomic it. community i think some people do just sort of suggest it as maybe a recommendation and you you take it or leave it but actually, yeah. I think sometimes we perhaps need to be a little bit more forthright with people and say, "Well, do you know what?" I, I can remember actually. This this brings back a good good story, which I shall recollect. Um, I went to um, uh, do a whole load of assessments for an IT company in Basingstoke one yeah. time, and it was typically sort of nineteen year old lads working there, and they, you know, they were all um, as nineteen year old lads typically are you know think they're indestructible and you know nothing's going to hurt them yep. but most of them were slouching really bad i mean they were virtually sat on the floor uh, at the mm. desk really slouching badly sort of their arms are almost above their heads at the desk um and that that seems to be there seemed to be a sort of like ideology of, of sort of bringing alcohol alcohol pops into to work as well and drinking those during the day it was it was that kind of you know <laughs> sort of behavior yeah. and uh and i spoke to the, the 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 chap that was in charge of the floor and he said well we've told them about you know sitting better and you know uh and and you know taking note of their their posture and and how they work etc but they don't seem to listen um yeah and i just i just went a lot first of all i, I went along the floor with a football um because I, I like like yourself i know that you know a lot of them were into their football and i put the football under the desk and i said um hey if you if you're not if you don't want to be using a, a foot rest because you think it's a bit namby pamby how about using a football yeah, and then you can the actually ball, yeah. put your foot on the ball and you can you know but you have to sit up Roll it if, back if, 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 yeah. yeah if you've ever tried it if you if you try um putting your feet on the football and, and sort of kicking it to each other and playing football with it under the desk you actually have to sit up that little bit more so that kind of helped yeah but then i I said i said to a lot of them i said um they said well yes but but look i don't have any problems with my back mate and i said look do do you do you enjoy relationships with the the other sex and they a lot of them went Well, 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 of course I do. I said, well, if you want to still be enjoying relationships with the other sex when you're 30, you, you need to think about your back a little bit more. 
and all of a sudden they were all, all set up. <laughs> so, you know, I think I think sometimes you just have to tell people you have to think about what's motivating people. And yeah, and I, I think that, that's in every, every walk of life. Find out what find out what motivates people. Um, I mean, it's it's a, it's a good good thing that you've, you've said on there. Some kids you can motivate, some parents you can motivate some people just need continual motivation and well done you know you've you've done this you know why why not try some something different so it's about trying to pinpoint what motivates people like like you've just said um it's a great it's a great point that because and that actually happened in, in every walk of life i mean i've managed teams of 20 30 people before and no no exactly the same it's finding out what what motivates them and it's very much the same in with ergonomics you know one thing you might recommend to one person uh, i'm not sure that's going to work the other person but oh this is brilliant you know it, it's, it's trying to work away um work what well, the best best way to do it for that particular individual i think yes now the next question sort of led on from the first one which is that you know oh. uh, we've seen seen a lot of people working from home over <laughs> over, <laughs> over this year <laughs> Um, yep. You know, and, and and with Christmas round the corner, we're going to see an awful lot of people drink and eat a lot more. So, you know, how, how do we how do we encourage people to move? I mean, we we we, we just touched on that, but how do we actually encourage people to move a bit more? I think I think the, the simple things um, that that you can do. I mean, I remember when I used to work in an office, and um, someone once told me before, you know, you drink, so you go and get. We'll get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a glass of water. Only half fill it. Yep. Only half fill yeah. the cup. So then, oh, God, I've run out. That means that you've got a headset or your, or your phone down. Get up and, and go for a bit of a walk around. If you're taking a phone call, I do this all the time. If I'm taking a phone call, I'll bowl bowl up and I'll walk around my house. Walk into the kitchen, go into the back room, sometimes go into the garden. So... Without me even knowing it now, it breaks my day up. I mean, you can probably see me going from, from side on there. That's just something I do because my back is quite, just from football, I hate being static, just moving around. So if you've got a rocker on your chair, rock backwards and forwards a little bit. Just keep that, oh, that yeah. blood flow go, going yeah. through. You know, it's, it's important if you're static, everything is static. A slight yeah. bit of movement, it's fantastic you know get an extension get an extension leads or you know so that you can stand up when you're talking to someone just just try and, and regularly move but i always start my day off at the moment with i just go for a 10 minute walk around the block absolutely and then when i sit down i feel so much better so i'll get a big breakfast which is something which i never ever used to do was have a, a decent breakfast in the morning now i have a decent breakfast in the morning and it probably carries me right the way through probably till two o'clock Yep. You know, it's, yep. it's a good way because that way you're not snacking. You know, you're not picking at little, little bits of people that maybe find them eating too much. I was always told to eat sort of between sort of eight, eight, 600 and 800 calories first thing in the morning because then that triggers something in your brain to say, literally, I'm full. It's like starting your car in the morning with five, five miles left on the clock. It's probably going to run out after five miles. So fill, fill it up in the morning and then you... Um, and, and it's it's very very similar, and the, you know these things don't cost anything. It's just doing things in a different particular in a different way. It's just, but again, it, it's down to that. Comes back to that self motivation again. You know, I, I, listen, I I know. But in fact, it took me mon months to sort of break out of this lockdown type of I've got to watch Netflix every day and that that's my life for the next for the next two months. I thought, what am I actually doing here? You know, and I thought, well there's me and then there's everyone on the streets and all around. Can I do something? And now people see me walking around and you know football and doing this, that and the other. And I actually feel so much better for doing it. So my one advice to people is just change. Change your day. Yeah. Still do the same thing, but but change change the way that you, way that you do things and start off in the first thing in the morning go for a walk get a decent decent breakfast and then whatever happens but please make sure you you move continually moving around i think i, I think when someone owns their own business that's that's quite 
easy. Well, it's not easy to do. You still need to be disciplined no. to do it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but but it's easier to do. I, I think where I feel slightly more sympathy is for people that are working for a business and that business do not <laughs> understand that their people at, at, at this time need more space. Um, I'll, I'll give and, you a prime example of that, Graham. Um, there's... Um, what can I say? There's um, a pay type company. I won't, obviously, yep. I, won't, I won't say who it is, but you have to, you know, pay a subscription every month. Some of their staff do um, 13 to 14 hour shifts at any one time. So if you ring their call centre up, and I think they do it in two, two, five hours. I think it's two, four, four hour shifts, or no, sorry, three, three, four hour shifts. And basically, for those four hours, they are not allowed to move from their screen because what it does it's got a power dialer so every time someone puts a phone the dial is ringing 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 and then flicks another call to them and they've yep. got to pick that call up they cannot disconnect from that that pc unless it's you know the urgent need to go to the toilet or something like that now i've been in these particular offices and some of the chairs are like what we used to sit at school can't move them anyway that they're basically one size fits all basically sat there all right we are now just doing that for hour after hour after hour. Now, these are young, young people. These, you know, we're talking 19, probably to 25-year-olds. So guess what? They've got no pain at the moment. Yep. And that, that that's the big issue that I find in, in, in the UK. It's almost, um, I don't know what the word is, but it, it's, you know, the education of, of, of young staff. That Well, there isn't any. It, it's basically, it's the profit versus health and the profit seems to be always outweighing. Now you look at other com look at other countries; it's completely different. You know, the, the one main thing is because they know that if they don't treat their younger staff well now, it's going to cost in the future. But it, 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 it always sort of comes down to that that P and L argument. It's it's cost over cost yeah. over health. So for for those younger people, I would, and I've worked in call centres before where I have got people headsets. That are, maybe if they're not Bluetooth, because some are with the longer cable, and while you're on there, you walk around, you walk around, yeah. so you've, you've got bigger. You're still doing your job, which, which is fine, but you're actually standing while while you're doing it, and there's not many do that. But I think that that's something that, that should be brought in. Yes, we know they've got a job to do, but let them at least stand up while while they're doing it, because otherwise there's going to be severe severe problems um, in in the years to come. Yeah. And, and, and I think if anyone finds themselves in a work situation where they feel under pressure to just just go along with the status quo in terms of their, you know, how they're yeah. how they're working physically on a day to day basis. Just remember that, you know, if you're working for a computer for that length of time, that business should be assessing you. Right. Absolutely. And, and if they're not doing it take it up if you're if you're part of a union or you know uh you, you you've got a manager take it up with the manager that that this should be being carried out um and you know you you should have an assessment of your needs for for working at that that workstation because as soon as that yeah, happens listen, yeah, I agree. you know adjustments was, can be made say, Graham, in, in an ideal world yes that that's what would happen but I know, you know, I could probably name 20 companies now that, that are, are, are not big, massive corporate companies. They're run by a one individual. I mean, Blackpool, for example, is um, synonymous with, with advertising and, and sales call centres and PPI yeah. centres. A lot, a lot of these guys literally set an office up for 12 months, employ 20 to 30 staff, stick them on a, on a PC, go and buy some local chairs from, from wherever, plonk them on down there. Now, there's no way that those employees, well, they could argue and they could take legal action, but they know what the outcome is going to be they'll be terminated because they'll be still in the probationary period or there'll be some some other some other reasons so yes the vast majority of people that, that work for decent companies have got that option it's the people that haven't got those options i think the government should be doing more to make sure that there is a certain level 
of adherence to you know to to ergonomics if if that's if that's a phrase to use that that each person should expect when they go to work they should expect to be cared for they should expect to be working in a healthy environment um but maybe that that's for another day due to the problems that the government have already <laughs> currently <laughs> well it, it it kind of it kind of leads <clears throat> on to the next question which is that because i believe that the answer to all of this is mainly lies in in education and maybe part of it lies earlier on um so my my view is and I, the question the next question i put today was how could more be done to target the education of young people in terms of the importance of ergonomics now i personally think that we ought to bring some of it into school and university because um maybe that's where this needs to start we i've seen throughout this whole period as well a lot of students struggling because they were meant to be going into lectures where you know they would they would hop on a bus every day or they would walk to campus and then they would go go to one theatre and then they would walk to another lecture theatre for something else so they'd be active around campus they're all sat on a couch at home mm. doing doing most of their lectures via zoom etc so they've been really static all right um now some universities have done something to, to talk to them about how they should do that safely but a lot of universities haven't mm. but you know this is where this becomes important if we if we started from a young age and i know uh in the scandinavian countries they take this really quite seriously but if we talked to youngsters at, at, at an early age even at school yep. before they get to university about how not just how to use a tablet or a computer but how you should do it safely yeah. Right. You know, the importance of how you sit, the importance of how you you you, you use uh, input devices, etc. And then and we and we continued that journey as we talk to students as they go through study and university, etc. Then there would be a better understanding right before students make that decision about what jobs they take, etc. And it would be a question that would come up a little bit more. Uh, you know, uh, interview, etc. about, you know, what provision am I going to get before yeah. I take this job? You know, if, if before I, I come and work for you and I'm going to be working from home, I'm thinking particularly of any students that have graduated this year, they should be asking yeah. businesses, what, what do I get <laughs> in terms of provision if I'm going to be working from home? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I personally w would take it way before university, um, e even as probably, you know, just even the start of, of senior school, um, because there's that many children at the moment. Um, well, maybe that, to be honest, because there's so many children now that have got a laptop, they've got a tablet, they've got a phone. What's the first thing they do? Just that after hour after hour. And, you know, e even at school, you know, a lot of them work from laptops. Not on laptop stands. They're not, you know, no adjustable um, chairs. They're the chairs that have been there for, you know, I'm not saying all schools, but the majority of schools because of the, of the lack of, um, I suppose, money that, that, that they've got to spend. A lot of them just recycle the same old equipment over and over and over again. You know, it's it's like with with me, my, my seven year olds at the moment. I, I teach them how to warm up. I teach them. I teach them how to get the blood circulating be before the game. Now. They'd never done that before. They'd never been. They were like, "Well, why are we doing this?" Because I said, "Because you could get muscle strains. You know, you, you you can pull a muscle. You you can stretch something. You know, you, you can eat, you can even sort of tear something if if it's worse. <laughs> Likelihood of doing it that when you're six is very poor. But it it's it's encouraging them to do the right thing. So then you teach them now, and that's something that they will carry on through through every stage of the life and every sporting stage of the life. Um, so I do that for when when the sport, but then when they go to school, it's, yeah. it stops. So you know, te teach people how how to sit up straight. You know how to how to angle angle the laptops because all these things, if they're suddenly going home and then they're having their head bent down for four or five hours, 
by the time they're 16 or 17, they're going to start to feel a few little pains. And, you know, even if she's 14 now, I regular see her doing this or, oh, my neck's really sore. And I have to bang home for um, about, you know, just actually sitting up properly, even if it's in bed, sitting up on a bed, but with a back against the, the headboard and actually, you know, have a laptop actually on, on something to, to keep it raised up. And to be fair, she's doing doing that now and she, she's you know she's got less pain but i think if we leave it too late with, with, with kids it's it, well it is it's going to be too late and, and i yeah. feel so sorry for it you know, it's um yeah it's not fair but no i i agree i think um we've got to start earlier and we've got to we've just got to put more ergonomic advice into more places as well you know, um, yes. I, was, I was really, I was really pleased when I bought my Mac. <laughs> I'm going to mm. say something nice about Apple for a minute. Um, <laughs> but I was really pleased when I bought my Mac to see that in the instruction booklet that came with the Mac, mm. there was yeah. a section in there on ergonomics. That's you know, good. they'd actually, yeah, they'd actually good. taken the time to, to, you know, say, look, as a user of a computer now, you've got to consider how you're using it. Yeah, and, and I just think yeah. uh, we, we need to see that happening in more places. You know, we should not be yeah. expecting wherever wherever people are using kit. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's a telephone, whether it's a whether it's a tablet, whether it's a a PC, um, you know, whether it's and for the future, whatever other devices yeah. happen, yeah. you know. The, the way that that's used and the safety of how that's used needs to be at least brought up in, and into the attention of people. Um, I agree. Yeah, you know, I agree. You know, if you, if you buy a phone in a, in, a, in a phone shop, there should be something in there with that phone that says, you know, just, just consider and maybe get some advice on, you know, how you use this phone <laughs> because – if, yeah, you, if, if you're, if, you know, if you're stood looking at your phone all day long with your neck down, it, it could have an effect. If, you, if you're if you're uh, texting with your thumb all day long, you could develop some kind of tendonitis around your thumb area. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah? yeah. So you, there, there needs to take, be a little bit more responsibility, perhaps from some of the manufacturers as well, in terms of what they deliver in the, at, at least in terms of signposting people in the first instance that, you know, um, I'm not suggesting that yeah. uh, with devices, right. it goes as far as cigarette packets where it says it will kill you. But, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we did that. <laughs> yeah. Remember, we did that with cigarettes, right? You can't buy a packet of cigarettes now yeah. without telling you that this can kill you. But at least what we yeah. could do is say there is a way of if you've bought this tablet or you bought this phone or you bought this computer, there is a way yeah. that you need to think about using this more safely. Um, and I, and I, again, I think it does need to start at a younger age with with children. Maybe yeah, a kids TV, maybe a kids TV program about ergonomics. There's a hint for anyone. Like, oh, there's, there's <laughs> yeah, if someone's got a, a TV company and they, they want to make a, a, a TV program about ergonomics, I'll, I'll be right there. <laughs> Boris Johnson. Yeah, well, no, not 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 a team. <laughs> so we're getting towards the end of the year. So what piece of uh, Christmas-related ergonomic advice could we offer people? You can just you can just go creative with this one if you want to. It may be around cutting the turkey. I don't know. It could be anything. Lots of games of charades and Twister and oh, anything else that any, any party games that involve movement, like charades or Twister. Let's go back to the old old, old games. Forget the the keyboards. Forget the tablets. Let's just go back to having some of that old school family fun, which the kids might go, "Oh God, they don't want to play that." But they might actually find it because it's something you know, different. I it's think you're right. As soon as they actually start it, they really will enjoy it. They'll love they, it. They'll yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Twister. I mean, you that, get it out. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, people go, "Well, how cool? What's that, what's that going to do? You've got a board with, where you spin things around, four colours, and and then a mat with four colours on it. That's not going to be exciting, is it? But once you get into it, brilliant. And you know, honestly, yeah, for for for, for couples with children or families with children, it's it's a great. It's a great. I'll, I'll try and play it on my own this year, Graham, because obviously I'm on my own, so I'm not not sure how I'm going to play Twister on my own. But I'll give it, I'll give it a go. But no, I think I, th I just think that everyone, you know, it, it's this Christmas trying to tell. I mean, I think people are sick of being told what to do at the moment. I, I certainly am, but you know, just just try and, and do something different that just doesn't involve doing the, the, the same old things i think you know I, i've learned d doing something different um and, and it can really make you, you you might stumble across something that you really enjoy that you didn't know so just try try something different um if, if it doesn't work then try try something else um but yeah it's i think it's, it's all about keeping just keep moving that activity because we're all locked in our homes which, which is sad enough for, um, don't make it worse by just sitting there, you know, get up and do yeah. something. And, and I'd say probably don't leave it until New Year's to... to no, no, do, do start, it today. Start, start thinking about your New Year's resolutions and, and how you're going to change no, things. Don't waste the time year's year's resolutions. Do it now. Do it today. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Because well, the, the trouble is, by the time you get to New Year, then you're busy again, Right. Christmas, Christmas should be the time to do this. Christmas should be the time to actually. And one of the yep. things I talked about in a post online the other day is that you know this week because actually, I'm you know as of today etc. I'm I'm kind of winding down in terms of other work that I'm doing. I said so this good. is a great time to actually just sit and analyze some of the things you've done in terms of practice. And say, right, yeah. okay, as of from now on in, I'm actually not going to do them in quite the same way. And I think getting back to that sort of that ergonomic side of things, you know, if if you've got through this year, well done, everybody. But if you've got through yeah. this year with a bad setup at home, you know, the, the, it's it's not comfortable to sit at all of the time. Um, things aren't necessarily in the right way, etc. You know, spend a little bit of time over Christmas just listening to things like this. Um, you know, or, or, or message. Or, Forget the Queen. Listen to me and Graham. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's <laughs> far more fun. Um, <laughs> but you know, don't spend a bit of time doing a little bit of research over Christmas. You know, can I? Can I uh, get? You know. Do I do I need a better chair? Can I get uh, you know, put my my equipment in a different way that that might be helpful? Can I break my day up going into next year in a different way? Perhaps I can. Perhaps I can invest in the, some bits of software or something that organise my day a little bit better so that I can actually create some time for myself. I think now is the time to do it. Don't wait till the New Year when you've started work again and go. All oh, right, now I'm gonna. Now I'm going to make a change in my life because you won't do it. Yeah. Um, because yeah. <laughs> you'll be too busy. Do it. Do it now. Plan it now. Have it ready. Be be ready for yeah. the beginning of the new year. I think that that's what to do. Um, remember, if you're lifting Christmas trees in and out of the house, bend your knees. Um, I think that's the. Or if you've got a really big turkey, you know, you you have to lift that properly. As well, manual handling with Christmas turkeys. I, I can't can't say that uh, that we're going to have a big enough turkey to, for me to worry about that. But you know, and I and I think if you've got the opportunity to uh, get out and do some exercise in the outdoors, then that's this is the time to do it over Christmas. That's yeah, so that's the when, when beautiful, crisp, and clear on Christmas Day. So. There's no better time to go out and have a family walk. Just go and get some some fresh air. Um, I mean, the weather's not been the greatest, so while we've got the opportunity, just get out there and you'll feel so much better. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
so this is the last one of this year we will be back yay early january with another one i think you're, you're still doing that uh that next one early january so you'll be back there for that um could be what what when when what uh <laughs> when are you when are you breaking up till now well i'm at home now until the foreseeable future so um well then you will be yeah, doing one then. <laughs> yeah, i'll be still here rocking away in my chair so yeah no i'll i'll, I'll be here when, whenever you leave me it's fine yeah yeah absolutely remember that that's a, that's a very good point we'll leave you on that point today um think about the song rocking around the christmas tree it actually relates to rocking on your chair when you work okay yep. because it is one thing that really does frustrate me more than anything else in this country and i, I talked to anders a little bit about it when he was on the show which is yep. that in this country we buy um chairs that have got reasonable adjustment in terms of movement and then we lock them yep. in place and yep. we just Bonkers. absolutely got to stop doing that yep. if if you I'm buy a chair that. that has got what's called dynamic supportive movement in it in other words it's designed yep. to help you move <laughs> between one yep. posture and another don't lock it um because otherwise what you'll do is you'll just it well for start it won't be comfortable because it won't support your back as you move you'll, you'll find that you move away from the back and then you'll slouch but it's just not promoting any kind of movement and if you know if you're the kind of person that fidgets when you when you sit to work brilliant well done on you because actually you'll probably have less problems so uh don't be scared to move keep on moving um as that was a that was a song wasn't it keep on moving keep on moving don't stop the well. hands yeah so um uh, a bit of uh remember soul to soul said so keep on moving and we're saying it too yeah. so <laughs> soul to soul della soul back della to the soul. 80s yeah there we go so if you if you like all of that kind of music just have that in your head when you're thinking about ergonomics next year and and it will do you an awful lot of good but for now yes. thanks paul thanks for coming in thanks no for uh, Thank you, joining us just before christmas um if no you're problem. listening to this on the podcast remember there are uh three previous episodes which you can catch up on as well so if you uh do the follow subscribe type thing uh you'll get access to all of those uh, you can go back to watch them. I'm also putting them up now on YouTube channel as well. So uh, if you want to find uh, any of these previous ones, you can go to www.abetterwayoflife.co.uk uh, and you can catch up on all of the previous conversations that I've had with people about ergonomics. Well, ergonomics will be back in the new year. So until then, have a great Christmas. Yeah, Don't Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye for now. Bye.